We also thank you, Lord, for your grace and how many you thank you for us. We have no idea what gifts we have, Lord, in our in our midst. So we just thank you, Lord. We just give you the glory for it. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Praise the Lord that we're all here this morning. Thank you for coming. Um, I uh, was praying and wanted to speak on this morning, and um, I, I've been really seeking and, and uh, about the lifestyle of Jesus, about imitating him, right? I, I did another sermon about that, about actually the, the, the faith, right, and that Jesus had. And one of the things that the, really, the Lord really led me to was uh, the the battlefield of the mind. And Jesus gave us a blueprint on that battlefield of the mind. And so, just thank you, Lord Father, for this, for this, this morning, Lord Father. We thank you. And I pray that our hearts would be open to this message. I pray that, Holy Spirit, that you would speak through me. I pray this day would be filled with your presence. Lord, take this, this day. May your fire set a blaze upon us in a mighty way. In Jesus' name. Uh, I want to continue on the on the lifestyle of Jesus and how we should imitate Jesus. That that is our goal to live as He did, right? We're, we're called to imitate Him. And and uh, last time I spoke about faith, the faith that Jesus had, um, that we can live it out the same faith that in our own lives. And Jesus spoke in John fourteen twelve through fourteen. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do. He will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And so as I spoke, I have spoken before, this is an amazing promise. And I believe his word is truth. I'm taking him at his word. His word is what is what I stand on and what I rely on to get through the things that I, go, that I call life. And then, and boy, do we go through things we call them life. So tonight, as we're working towards, the, or today, as we're working as a goal of the lifestyle of Jesus and imitating him, I would like to speak on warfare. Warfare of, in the mind. It's so important because we all go through it. So this scripture that the Lord gave me was this. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Okay? Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. And Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he, Jesus, answered him and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Which is interesting, that's Psalm 91. Jesus said to him, It is written, again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. And again the devil took him, Jesus, up to, to an exceedingly high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he, the devil, said to him, All these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord God, your God, and him only you shall serve. See, this is the blueprint that Jesus laid out for us on how to stand against the fiery darts of the enemy. Satan is a created being and is completely subordinate to God's power and God's word. As you read these scriptures, Satan uses God's word. Yes. 
but twist the truth to cause humans to doubt God and, and even in his word. But as we read in scriptures in Matthew chapter 4, Satan comes at Jesus with false truth of God's word. Uh, uh, Satan did that in Genesis also with Adam and Eve. Twisted God's word. Okay, so Jesus is the son of God, right? One of the reasons Jesus came was to relate to our human struggles and to overcome temptations in the same way we, every Christian, would overcome those temptations. Jesus had to show a way that every, everyone listening can overcome temptations. Jesus had to rely on the same power that would be available to each of us and to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ and, and, that, and that Holy Spirit filled, right? For us to be filled with, filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus knew that. Jesus knew where we were going to be because he's God, and he knew what, how we would, we'd need each of us to make it so simple that even children, right. knowing the word of God, can fight these temptations. Exactly right. right? So that's, what, that's how loving and kind God is. Amen. So, in Hebrews 4, chapter 4 through 16, Seeing then that we have a high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast for our confession, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but in all points was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in time of need. This shows the fact that Jesus Christ is our high priest, that we that can relate to everything that we go through. Jesus Christ is a mediator between us and humans, and uh, us humans and the Almighty God. Because Christ can sympathize with our weaknesses and is able to relate to, to us with everything we go through, as we understand this, we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Amen. So we understand that Jesus has gone through those things, so that, that uh, as we have that understanding that he went through those things, then we can go, okay, I know that you've gone through those things, Lord. So I come to your throne of grace boldly because I know who you are. Amen. That's so amazing. So the throne in the strong, strongest concordance, okay, is G2362. It's a thronos. Uh, it's obviously meaning a, a throne, but a seat of authority, right? A, the throne of God where grace comes from. And grace is G5485, it speaks of the freeness, uh, the spontaneous character in the case of God's redemptive mercy. And it's, it's God's, in the case of God's redemptive mercy and, and pleasure or joy he designs for the recipient, meaning that we have redemption, that we have peace with God, his unmerited, unmerited favor. It is the throne of grace because from it flows God's favor, his love, his help, his mercy, his forgiveness, his wisdom, spiritual power, spiritual gifts, the fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, and the authority of the Almighty God has given us power and authority over Satan. Just we just need to be able to use it. <laughs> Everything we need comes from that. And I, I have a 1818 18, 28 Webster's Dictionary. They say it's the last Christian dictionary. And, it, and I looked up grace, and uh, it's amazing because it says, I'm married to the favor of God, but the spring and source of everything man needs from God. It's so good because it's a continuous spring and source. So if today I need strength, he gives me strength. If today I need love, he gives me love. It's just unending of what God will give us. That's what grace is. Grace is not just, not just to cover our sins, but actually to help us through unserving him. So Matthew 10, 1, talking about authority. Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them what? Gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Mark chapter 3, verse 15. And to have authority to cast out demons. Mark chapter 6, 7. And he summoned the 12 and began to send them out in pairs and gave them what? Gave them authority over unclean spirits. 
chapter, Luke chapter 9, 1. And he called the twelve together and gave them the power and what? Authority over all demons and to heal diseases. Luke chapter 10, verses 19. Again, I'm just kind of reiterating this because this, this is what God has given us, okay? There's many scriptures. Behold, I have given you what? Authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. Nothing will injure you. This is what God has given us, authority. We just need to use it. And how do we use it? Through the word. As we confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and put our trust in him, we have his favor and his covering as a high priest and the power and authority of the Holy Spirit working in us and through us also. Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth that Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the, from the dead, you will be saved. And I love Romans. Romans is amazing. Romans chap, uh, chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. Paul says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the very thing that Satan is trying to do to separate us from God. You can see it now. He's trying to close churches. This is not a, a, a human thing. This is a spiritual thing that we're fighting. Exactly. This is a war and we're in. And we just have to stand strong. So John 10.10, 10, the thief does not come to accept to steal, kill, and to destroy. So in Matthew chapter 4, right, which we read earlier, 1 through 11, Jesus was led into the, into the desert, right? It says by the Spirit. Interesting, right? To what? Why? It's a good question. To be tested. It is reasonable to assume that Jesus was strengthening himself and preparing himself through prayer, fasting, meditation on God's word for the work that the Father has sent them to do. This was total preparation. And 1 Peter 1, verses 6 through 7, I love scripture, so when I usually speak, I just like scripture, scripture, scripture. Uh, in this you greatly rejoice, though now, for a little while, if, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So just as Jesus was tested and tempted in the desert, so are we. We are, are no exception to the rule. <laughs> We're his children. What would make the church think that we would not go through the same thing that Jesus went through? I mean, he promised it. We are called to follow Jesus Christ. That is why we're called Christ followers, right? We are not called Christ sitters. Just to listen to a sermon for that week, week in, week out, and that's it. We are called to serve, right? We are called to be the light. We are, Jesus said, go. He said, go and baptize and create disciples. Go and do, right? I have given, in Matthew 28, 18, he says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. He said, what? Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the end of age. That means Jesus has all authority. And he has all authority. And what did he do? He gave it to us. To use for his glory for the kingdom of God. Right. So what do we do? Well, we go and do. As we do, we will experience temptations from the devil. It's inevitable. But praise God, we have a blueprint on how to fight. What did he say? It is written. Right? If Satan comes at you, oh, I don't think you're going to be able to do that. No, it is written. I can do all things through Christ. And he has to bow to the word because that's it. It's God. 
We cannot have fear. Fear is of the devil. Perfect love casts out fear. 1 John 4, 18. For there is not fear in love, but per perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Let me ask you a question. Do we have to fear torment? No. No, we don't. Why? Because we've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. We will never die. We're never going to die. Never. That's so, so good. That's the good news. Our physical body might die. Yeah, our tent, our tent may go into the ground, but our soul and our spirit will never die. Yeah, amen. So we've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. We will never die because we have been redeemed. It's such a blessed thing by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Come on. The perfect lives in us. His perfect love is manifested in us. So amazing. God wants to live in us. He's like, I want to live in you. I want to live in you. You are beautiful and amazing, and I love you. You're so precious to me. That's what he thinks of us. So Romans 8, 31 and 32, he says, What then shall I say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? There is nothing in heaven that is not at your disposal. God said, freely give you all things. What resources do you need? What do you need? God is the one that gives. He will give us anything that we need. God, create the God, creator of heaven and earth, the God that that spoke and all things came to be, the God that breathed life into you and I. That very life that you have, right? That we have. God breathed life into us. Promises to give you all that you need, and He has given it to you, His very authority. Once you realize this, everything of God is at your disposal. Nothing can stand against you. You will be so dangerous for the kingdom of God. Amen? You are like a mighty, powerful warrior. I love that scripture I pray sometimes. I don't trust in chariots. I don't trust in horses. But I trust in the Lord God. He's my strength. Amen? This should empower you today. Know it. Just we have to know it. The Almighty God has given me authority. Everybody needs to say that. God, the Almighty God has given me authority. Amen? Another thing, I will not be ignorant of the authority God has given me. Amen? We will not be ignorant of the authority God has given me. The Word of God is this authority. The Holy Spirit working in you gives you the power to use it. Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than two-edged sword, piercing even the division of the soul and spirit, of the joints and marrow. It is the discerner of thoughts and intent of the heart. Let me ask you, what is more powerful than what you have in your hands? Nothing. Nothing is more powerful than the Bible that you hold in your hands. That's God. John 1.1, 1, 1, what does it say? The Word was with God, right? The, God, the Word was God. The Word is God. That is why Satan tries to distort it. That's why you hear false teachings and false doctrine is because Satan is trying to distort that Word, to, to minimize that power, to, to, to lessen the power of it. Also, this is why Jesus... And, this is why Jesus, in our blueprint, shows us how to use it. Jesus wanted every believer to be able to stand against the devil. That is why he came against Satan as he did, to show us it is written. Why did Jesus say, why did Jesus say against Satan? He said, it is written. Why would he say that? So, because the word of God is powerful. The word is our sword. As in Ephesians chapter 6, right? The sword is the word. So Jesus gave us the blueprint in how to use our sword. It is written. If Satan comes at you with doubt or temptations, you use the word of God. If Satan comes 
says, you will not get through this. You have nothing. You can say, it is written in Matthew 6, 31 through 33, the Lord will provide all my needs. But Satan says, you're all, you're all alone. You can say, it, it is written in John 14, 26, I am never the Lord alone. The Lord has sent his Holy Spirit to be my helper. But Satan tempts you with anything. It is written, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation will overcome me. God is faithful. I will not be tempted beyond my ability. He has given me escape. If Satan, if Satan tries to steal your joy, you can say it is written in John 15 and 11. The Lord provides my joy. You don't. God does. Right. Satan tries to steal your hope. It is written in Ephesians 1, 16 through 18. The Lord gives me my hope and my rich inheritance. If Satan comes at you because you feel like you're on the shelf or, or in the desert, you can say, it is written, Jeremiah 29, 11, for God has a future and a plan for me, and I know it's for good. If Satan comes at you, do as Jesus did. Away with you, Satan. It is written, God has given me authority over you, and I command you to go. Amen. You have to go. Glory, glory. 1 Corinthians 9, 26, therefore... I, I ran thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. See, we're, no, we're not walking our lives with uncertainty. We know exactly where, we, where we're going. We're just pilgrims. We're just walking right through, living this life serving God. We don't fight as one beats the air. We fight through the word of God. We know that our prayers are not in void. Right. So because we are connected with God, we are not beating the air. Because we are connected, we're in a relationship. We're like in, in a, a partnership with God. So as we pray, He gets activated. You, you know, you tell telling Satan, it is written. God's like, hey, you leave. Right? I have a good friend, just a little side note. I have a friend, uh, my good friend Bruce. He always said, you know, that Satan comes knocking at your door. Right? And say, hey, Jesus, can you open the door for me? <laughs> Something's knocking at the door. And then you always had this picture that Jesus is opening the door to a, a demon. And the demon saying, Jesus, oh, I got the wrong address. I'm so sorry. I got the wrong address. I'm sorry. I'm going to go somewhere else. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So we are encouraged by Jesus to fight as with a blueprint to fight. Fight with the word of God, not aimlessly but with the direction of the word of God. Not to lay down and take a beating from the devil. No, we are here to fight the battle, battle against the enemies of, of Christ and the gospel. We have all authority from God. He wants and desires for each of you to use it. That's why he gave it to each of you. There is no partiality with God. We are all his precious children. He offered it to each of us. All of us, it's, it's available. All of us have the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter if we're at work or at home or the grocery store or wherever we are. The Holy Spirit is in us. We're never alone. So no matter what we're going through, God is fighting with us. In Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness and the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may withstand in the evil day. Having done all what? To stand. We stand on God. We stand with God. Hallelujah. Therefore, Having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and have shod your feet with preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with you, you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. 
being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. For we have to get strong in the word of God. All of us have to get better at this. All of us. These times are going to be amazing for us as children of God. I'm, I'm, I'm prophesying that. I'm saying that. Why? Because we're children of God. It's going to be amazing for us. Why am I saying this? Because we're going to see signs and miracles and wonders. God promises the outpouring of his, his, uh, his glory, his presence, his spirit be upon us. Yes, I can honestly say, yes, the times for the population are going to get crazy and tough. We're seeing it. But we have the source that everyone needs. Amen. That is Jesus Christ. That is the source that everyone needs. Everyone. We are all commanded to do is preach the good news. We're all the light. We all have the light in us. If I go to the grocery store, I, I, have, I have these coins that have the Ten Commandments on them. I give them to them and I say, this is a reminder that Jesus loves you. And it just opens, breaks the ice. There's things that we can do to break the ice, to, sh to share the gospel. And the most importantly, one thing that we can do to preach the, to show the gospel and preach the gospel is how? The way we live. People see and watch what we do, what we say, how we how we conduct ourselves. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So God said, go, make disciples, go, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. You all, all of you that are believers and follow Christ have the Holy Spirit in you. We all need more of him. We all do. So how do we do that? We pray, we fast, we learn to worship on our knees at our home. Reading and studying the word out, he will speak to each of us. In Matthew 6 3 says, Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and he will give you all things. He will give you all of heaven at your disposal. He says, Just seek him, ask, ask, and you will receive. Amen. So I really pray. Lord Father, I thank you, Father, for this authority that you've given us. I thank you, Lord Father, that you are working on each of our behalf. I thank you that we are strong because you are strong. Paul said, I, I, I'm weak, but I am strong. I'm strong because the Almighty God lives in me. And each of us have that same, the same source as believers in Christ, the Almighty God working on your behalf. So I just pray that you be edified and be encouraged that you can go lay hands on the sick and somebody, your daughter, your family member, or somebody, at, 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 you know, wherever you are, it's not feeling good, say, I can pray, Jesus will heal you. Right. You can lay hands on the sick, raise the dead, and cleanse the lepers. As people see you doing those works, they become believers because they see God moving. So I just, I, I just release that anointing today, Lord Father, that all of us, Lord Father, will get better at this warfare, this battle for the mind, that we will stand and say, it is written, the word of God. I pray that each of us would continue to read and study the word of God so that when times are needed, we can pull our sword out and use it. We just thank you, Lord Father. We love you, we praise you, we worship you, Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. I just wanted to say that this week, if, do you have anything else? No, this week when we were, um, uh, when I, one day I had a,